Hi everyone and welcome back to my series on how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. In this episode, we will make it possible to click and move items in the inventory. This is the second part on this topic. Also, I know that Godot 4.2 has just come out, but I will stay on 4.1 for this click and move mini series. After it's done, I will move the project to 4.2. And now let's get started. Okay, so I think the inventory is one of the most complicated things we've been working on so far, and especially when we start moving things around. So I think that the first thing we should do is to break down the problem into smaller parts to make it easier to stay on track. First, we need to be able to click on a slot and pick up the item in it. Next, we should update the item in the hand so it moves around with the mouse. Then we should insert the item in hand if we click on an empty slot. And finally, we need to make sure that the inventory model is updated correctly. We could also look at swapping and stacking items and maybe discarding items, but I think that will have to wait for another episode. Now let's go to the inventory GUI script and add a new variable to keep track of the item in our hand. This will be an item stack GUI. We now need a way to get the item from the slot we've clicked on. So in the slot GUI script, let's create a new function called take item. Here, we first store the slot's item stack GUI in a temporary variable called item. Then we remove the item stack GUI from the slot's container and set the variable to null. And we also change the background frame to zero, so the slot will look empty. Finally, we return the original item that we stored in the temporary variable. Down in the onslot clicked function, we then set the item in hand to be the item we take from the slot. and then add this as a child of the inventory GUI. And now let's test and see what's happening. So when we click in a slot, the item is removed from the slot and added to the inventory, but it's stuck at the top left corner of the inventory. So let's change this so the item follows the mouse. Back in the inventory GUI script, we create a new function called update item in hand. First we return if item in hand is null. And then we update the position of the item in hand if it isn't null. I set it to the position of the mouse minus half the size of the item. This centers the item around the mouse. All we need to do now is call this function every time the mouse moves. We can do this by adding the Godot input function and calling the update from here. And let's also call this function right after we set the item in hand in the slot clicked function. And now we can pick up an item and move it with the mouse. And now a word from today's sponsor, which is me. I spend a lot of time on each and every video for this channel, and I really enjoy making these free tutorials for all of you. If you want to support my work on the channel, then you can do this on Patreon. I have a few different tiers you can choose from. If you want access to all the project files for my newer tutorials, then there's also a tier that includes that. I really can't say enough how much I really appreciate all my supporters. Thank you so much for your support. And for anyone who wants an easier way to support my work, then you can also choose to become a channel member here on YouTube. And now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so now we also want to be able to place the item in hand in an empty slot. But before we add this, let's refactor a bit. First, let's create a new function for when we pick up an item. I'm calling this take item from slot. 
and then I move the code that takes an item and adds it to the inventory down here. And then in the onslaught clicked function, we need to add a call to our new function. Now let's also create a new function for inserting an item. I'm calling this insert item in slot. In this function, we both need to insert the item to the slot and remove it from the inventory GUI. So just as in the take item function in the slot GUI script, we first store the item in hand in a new temporary item variable. Then we remove the item in hand from the inventory and set the variable to null. And finally, we insert the item in the slot. Now we need to call this function from somewhere, but we only want to call it when we have clicked on an empty slot and we are also holding an item. So first, we add an isEmpty function to the slot GUI. This just returns true if the slot's item stack GUI is null and false otherwise. Back in the inventory GUI script, we then go to the onslaught clicked function. And at the start of this function, we check if the slot we clicked is empty and that we have an item in hand. If this is the case, we then call our new insert item in slot function and return. And let's also add a guard around the take item from slot call so we can only call this if we have an item in hand. And now let's test again. We can click on an item to pick it up and move it around as before. If we click on a slot with another item, then nothing happens. And if we click on an empty slot, then the item in hand is inserted here. However, now let's see what happens if we close the inventory, pick up a new item, and then open the inventory again. Hmm. This doesn't seem right. What we still need is to update the inventory model correctly. In the inventory script, we create two new functions. Remove item at index, which takes an index as input, and then inserts a brand new inventory slot at this position. and an insert slot function that takes both an index and an inventory slot as input. Here, we first use the find function to see what index the slot came from originally. And remove it using our new remove item at index function. Afterwards, we then insert the inventory slot at the new position. OK, we can now insert items in the inventory model and it will then automatically also remove the item from the slot it was previously stored in. Now we then need to figure out where and how to call it. We can do this in a few ways, but I prefer to do it in the slot GUI scene. But before we can do this, the slot GUI then needs to know which index in the inventory model it corresponds to. For this, we first add an index variable to the slot GUI scene. And then we need to set this from the inventory GUI scene. We can do this in the connect slots function where we are already going through all the slots. However, we need to change the for loop so we know what index we're looking at. Instead of an for each loop, we will change it to an in range loop, with the range being the size of the slot's array. Then for each i, we first create a slot variable with a reference to the slot at position i in the slot's array. And let's set the index for this slot. Now all the slots knows which index in the inventory model they should correspond to. Back in the slot GUI scene, 
We then first add a variable to store a reference to the player's inventory, just like we did in the inventory GUI. And we then also need to call the insert slot function at the end of the update function. However, there are a few cases where this function shouldn't be called. One is if the item stack GUI doesn't have an inventory slot. The other is when the inventory model already has the same inventory slot as the item stack GUI at the slots index. In any of these cases, we return from the function. So the insert slot function will then only be called for all other cases. And now let's test again. We can now click and move items around in the inventory. We can place them in empty slots and most importantly, the inventory model is updated correctly. So even if we close the inventory and pick up new items, everything shown when we open the inventory again will be as they should be. If you liked this video and want to see more like this in the future, then remember to like it and subscribe to my channel. Later, we'll look into how we can swap items, discard items from the inventory, and put the item in hand back into its old slot when we close the inventory. I hope you enjoyed this video.